Hello everybody, Andrea Maeski here with Dental Health Tutoring. I'm going to talk to you guys about taxes today. So the dental hygienist and taxes. Now, before I continue, let me honestly say that I'm not an accountant and I highly recommend getting an accountant. I have one, I try to do it myself, um, but honestly, that's not where my skill set lies. And when it comes to money, you want to be able to claim everything you can, but you don't want to claim too much and try to get away with too much, and then you get in big trouble and have to pay money back. So I highly recommend an accountant for sure. Um, I could talk about taxes for hours because there's a lot to show you guys. There's a lot of templates and things involved, but once you get the hang of it, it's super easy. It just means you have to stay organized. You have to be organized. And I tend to look through everything, my expenses, income once a month. I try to do it once a week, but life gets in the way and that's just difficult to do. I'm sure if I did it once a week, it'd be a lot easier for me but I take an hour or two once a month and get through everything whereas when I first started I guess claiming taxes to be a dental hygienist or to be a dental hygienist um, was when I started tutoring and I made more money that I kind of had to claim taxes anyway for my tutoring and now I kind of lump it all in into one big sum but I would do that at the end of the year, but I would literally spend hours and hours and hours looking through expenses, looking through my income, looking through all of this. So I teach you guys how to be organized and I kind of teach you guys what worked for me because I consider myself an organized person, but I'm also one of those people where when life gets in the way, I put things off, you know, like I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. And then, oh, something else came up. I'll do it on Saturday. And then, oh, I'll do it on Tuesday. Oh, well, I haven't done it for three weeks. What's another week, you know? So I'm one of those people. But it's so much easier to just get things organized ahead of the game and to talk to a professional. That has helped me so much. Um, I go through everything in my course that I have now called um, Dental LRD. I'll put the link on the bottom for you if you are interested. It is a full course where you have lifetime access to everything that a dental hygienist needs to know. Now, I am based in Canada, um, but I talk about everything that a dental hygienist needs to know as a whole, including taxes. Everybody always has questions about taxes, and I know a thing or two about taxes because I've been claiming them now for at least four years, it should have been sooner, but I just didn't know any better. So I've been claiming them now for four years and it has saved me a fortune. Um, so if you guys would like to check out that course, I do offer full um, templates for taxes, which is great. Um, like I said before, I could talk about taxes for hours, but I'm just gonna kind of go through um, the basics for you right now so you have an idea. So if you are a temp dental hygienist, taxes are a little bit different for you because if you're not a permanent employee of some kind, whether it be full-time or part-time, your employer isn't automatically taking away taxes from your paycheck and they should be. Um, if you're a permanent employee, they most likely are. Um, anytime a dental office tells you that they're hiring you under contract, tell them that's not allowed. Now, again, you guys, um, Everything I mentioned in the video today depends on where you live, of course, but this is pretty much throughout the board and, and what I've been told from my accountant personally. Not all accountants might agree with the same thing. Some accountants like to get away with certain things. Some of um, accountants are less, you know, what's the word I'm looking for, but they're less aggressive. Some of them are more aggressive. So it really depends on the accountant, but me, the relationship that I have with my accountant is I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to owe any money. Even if that means by not taking risks, I'm okay with that. I don't want to owe anything. But the main thing that he has said to me is as a dental professional, you're not, it's not your fault. It's their fault. If the dental office, if your boss is telling you know, taxes, that you are a contract employee, that is wrong. Because if you're a permanent employee, you can't be a contract employee. And what employers like to say is if you're a contract employee, well, it's easier for them because they don't have to fill out tons and tons and tons and tons of paperwork when they don't really know if you're staying anyway, because um, it is a lot of paperwork. Plus, they don't have to worry about knowing how much to take away tax time, or sorry, um, 
They don't have to worry about knowing how much to take away from your paycheck. So it's just a lot easier for them to give you a check and to simply pay you as if you were, you know, in installing new hardware in your home. If you're putting in kitchen cabinets or if they're putting in kitchen cabinets or whatever, when you hire a maid to clean your house, if you hire a house um, cleaner, you don't give them, you know, you don't sign them up as your worker, you just simply give them cash or give them a check, right? So that's kind of what they're treating you as, as well, you work for me, here's cash, here's a check. They're not supposed to do that. Have I accepted that? Oh, heck yes. I, I, I worked for an office for almost a year that I was hired under contract, but I didn't know any better. I thought it was fine. I felt like I made so much more because they're not taking away taxes, but I made sure to set aside enough for taxes just to be on the safe side. Now, how much you want to set aside is up to you. So if for some reason you are in a situation where you are being paid as a contract employee, meaning they don't take away taxes, set aside enough for taxes every paycheck. My accountant says to save 30%. Um, 20 to 30%. I would just always save the 30% because I didn't want to get caught up with having to pay so much at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year, whatever, and to just simply not have the money and anything that was left over, I felt good and I just used it on something else versus let's say, oh, well, I'm just going to save 10% because that's all I can afford. You will owe a lot at the end of the year or sorry, the beginning of the year. I keep saying end of the year, but you would, you know, handle your taxes at the beginning. Um, but you will owe so much and you'll be so stressed. Okay. So I suggest putting aside 30% because, Hey, we're human beings. If, if we've been working somewhere forever and they've hired us on contract and not taking away taxes, we, we probably don't feel comfortable going up to them and saying, you're not allowed to do this. You know, you have to pay me as a proper, um, employee, take away my taxes, you know? We're not going to do that. I'm human. You're human. I totally understand that. So if you're in that situation, then make sure to put enough aside. But if you want to look for another job, it's probably a good idea because it will save you a lot of headache. Trust me. Even I've been in the situation before where I worked at a, at a dental office. I was young, you know, I didn't really know any better, but they weren't taking enough away from taxes. So here I thought I'd be fine, but come tax time, I, I, always owed money. It would be $800, $2,000, whatever, but I always owed money. And I'm thinking, why do I owe money? Like, this is ridiculous. And you know, when you're young, you probably don't have $800 just lying around. And my accountant, or sorry, I didn't have an accountant at the time, but I knew an accountant. Um, and I just sort of, you know, asked them some questions and they said, well, they're not taking away enough for taxes. And I'm thinking, how am I supposed to know that? Shouldn't they be knowing that? So that's just kind of how that comes into play. So I guess in a nutshell, make sure your office is taking away taxes. That does help you so much. Now, a lot of hygienists ask me, can we claim um, uniforms? Can we claim our gas uh, receipts? Can we claim continuing education? Yes, you can, but it just depends on how you go about it. If you call yourself self-employed, then yes, you can claim all of those things. But that also means you're not um, allowed to have a lot of the benefits of a lot of things that those who aren't self-employed are entitled to. So it just depends on how you want to go about it. So a little backstory about me is I've been tutoring now for about almost 14 years, but I just started claiming taxes for that about four or five years ago because I just simply wasn't making enough or so I thought to claim taxes, but apparently I was, and I should have been, but I just simply didn't know that, right? But now that I make a full-time income from tutoring, which is awesome, I love that, I have to, whether I want to or not, claim taxes, but that does have its certain benefits. Claiming taxes on it um, means that I can claim things like I tutor from home, so I can claim my um, mortgage, my computer, my my heating costs, my air conditioning costs. Um, if I hired somebody to mow the lawn, you know, things like that I can claim. So you're probably thinking, well, I can't claim that stuff. I don't work from home. Um, but, you know, as I was saying, though, I'm self-employed, but I... I do tie in my um, dental hygiene stuff as well because I am considered a temp hygienist. 
So that could mean, depending on the office where I work in, is I get cash or a check or I'm seen as a contract. If I don't work in the same office all the time, it doesn't make sense for them to hire me as an employee if I'm there, you know, one Monday every six months or, you know, something like that, right? It just doesn't make sense. Sorry, guys. I'm expecting somebody and I was just checking if they were here yet, but they're not. Um, so it just kind of depends on the situation. But for me, since I'm a tutor and I do own my own business and I can kind of tie everything in, which is nice. But that also means that I am not entitled to un un unemployment income if I ever lose my job as a temp hygienist or if I'm working somewhere permanently. I would not be entitled to that because I tutor as well. I'm not entitled to maternity leave because I'm saying I'm self-employed, but that's also because I tutor as well. So when you say you're self-employed, when you classify yourself as self-employed, you are self-employed and you're not entitled to a lot of the same things. So you kind of have to look into that and think, okay, well, if I'm claiming everything, I'm self-employed. Or do you work for an office where you don't have to claim everything, um, but you are still, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> I'm just going to have some water for a second. <laughs> Clearly, I'm very passionate about this topic, right, guys? Sorry, I keep thinking I'm, I'm like hearing things. Sorry, now my webcam is all blurry. Well, it's probably because my dog is barking, so sorry about that. Um, so you have to pick and choose what you want to do. But if you were a permanent employee somewhere else, you could always, you know, try to claim things like your continuing education. You know, like that's something small that they would just simply say yes or no to, but it can't hurt to try to claim, say, a $300 course, right? But if you go so far as claiming all of your gas to and from work, claiming continuing education, um, education, claiming your um, uniforms, all of that, then you can't just have it both ways. You have to be self-employed. So this is where if you guys have more questions and need more help, sign up for my new course, um, Dental L RDH. Well, it's a new course, but all of this, I've been developing the course for probably just under a year. It is amazing and it will help you with so many things, not just taxes. So if this sounds confusing to you, um, please have a look and I, and I go through everything for you inside the course. There's templates, there's everything. Um, but let's see, what time is it? How long has this video been? Sorry guys, I tried not to make it too long. Um, but I want to mention though too, for your uniforms, you're not allowed to claim your uniforms unless it has the logo on it. So if it says your office logo, then you can claim it because it's for that office, right? Um, technically, if you have like a logo of your name on there, you might be able to get away with claiming it, but I haven't tried that yet. So I don't know if I would recommend it, but it has to be something permanent and it has to be a logo. You know, simply me, you know, even myself as a tutor, me buying new clothes, I can't claim that as my uniform, even though I tutor online, I have to wear clothes, you know, for my students, obviously. Um, and I can't just always wear the same clothes, but, but they say, well, yes, technically you can, um, unless it is a uniform that I wear only for my, um, webinars and tutoring, I could claim that, but that's a lie. So I can't claim a lot of the things that I might be able to. So you really can't have it both ways. Get an accountant to help you. But I do have templates, everything, all of that inside the course. There are hours and hours, yes, there are, of um, videos helping you guys through everything, not just taxes, but talking about appointments, talking about how to talk to patients, what do you do when a patient doesn't want x-rays, infection control, how to transfer a patient in a wheelchair. You know, I mean, we're talking about taxes here, but there's a lot inside the course. I'll, I'll, I'll leave the link at the bottom for you. Feel, feel free to have a look. And taxes especially is not something that you can kind of read over, work on your taxes for one afternoon. It's an ongoing thing. But if you utilize them properly, you can save a ton of money come tax time. I can't say that enough. Um, a quick example again, I took uh, the restorative hygiene course about three years ago. I was able to claim that on my taxes. So I saved about $7,000. Yeah, 
the course was about 10,000 and I saved a good chunk of money because I was able to claim that. But I was also a tutor and self-employed at that time. So I was able to claim all of that. But if you're not careful, you could end up owing a lot of money too. So you really need to need to be careful. Um, hire an accountant and they will help you out. But your accountant won't be a dental hygienist. So I can help you guys with the dental hygiene part and what works for me, how I claim my taxes, and then oh, it would be so much less stressful for you. And I do update the tax part of the course at the end of every single year because things change so you will have that after every single year because inside the course um, dental L R D H it's a lifetime course so you can even just watch a couple videos a year watch the one um, tax um, um, module that has a ton of um, teachings in there and it would be well worth it so thank you guys for watching, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment and I would be happy to help you guys out. So thank you for watching and good luck come tax time. I'm going to go organize my taxes now actually because it is almost the end of the month and I'll see you guys in the next one.